had to what Arsenal started like house on fire. Signing number two for this new era. It's judgment day, people. Yeah! What did your boy tell you? It was never in doubt. Never in doubt. Now then people, welcome back to the Just Joe football show. Please smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in and of course hit that notification bell. And uh, like the intro says, it was never in doubt. This manager is still in doubt, right? Leeds United are still waiting to push the button on their manager. I genuinely believed it would be today, um, but now we are... Just past two o'clock. It's not going to be today, is it? Uh, it looks like it's going to be next week now. Uh, I can't share the um, source, but um, I have it from someone uh, pretty well uh, connected um, that, that it is a two-horse race, that it is between Vieira and Farca. Um, and as soon as the EFL um, give us the ratification, if you like, then it, then it should be announced. And I know that's what's been... Um, sort of uh, echoed within the YEP and within the Athletic. Um, they have spoken to other managers, um, but it looks like it's a bit of a two-horse race between Daniel Farker and Patrick Vieira. I was led to believe it would be Patrick, but um, it seems that that information may be either not correct or something's happened. I did get a message a little bit later on last night, as I shared with you yesterday, that there might have been a few issues with the Patrick Vieira thing. I'm not too sure. Um, but look, we'll we'll have to we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. I think it's clear that that Leeds United can. I don't know if the I don't know if they can hire a manager. But before anything happens, we need these shares to go through, right? We need uh, the the transfer of um, uh, shares from Andrea Radrizzani to to Leeds United. Um, just on this, John T, I had messaged. I thought I was getting it today as well. Don't worry about it. Shall I message him now, right? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll message him. Wait there. Uh, let me just message him now. He's probably watching. He watches sometimes. Yo, Lewis, I'm on live right now, and I've got people going on at me. Um about my intro, where is it at, mate? Come on, you know what I mean? The people are waiting on you. Pull your finger out, will you? There we go. We'll see if he responds. But, yeah, um, I'm still waiting on it myself. Uh, all Chinese whispers with these so-called IT keys. Mate, I've I've got receipts, mate. I've got receipts. I can't share, but, uh, um, yeah, it is what it is, right? Um, listen, you can tell from the articles from those that we deem to be uh, in the know, they they also don't know. <laughs> um, this club runs a very, very tight ship now. It's probably a good thing. Big up to mam, uh, Mammy, Katie, big up to you. This club lose, uh, uh, very uh, runs a very um, tight ship now because no one knew about Nick Hammond, then boom, it happened. So even the people, yeah, I've got a fly in the room. The dog was trying to catch it. I know, right? It's because my window's open because the, upstairs, upstairs, it gets so hot. This is why I struggle to sleep. I've got one of them light loft conversion bedrooms and it gets so hot. You would not believe and really cold in the winter. There's no middle ground with it. So like I struggle to sleep because I wake up sweating. Man. And when I'm sweaty, I have bad dreams. So <laughs> it's just something that's always happened. So I wake up like in a panic state. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mad one. Big up Lee Chappie. Uh, big up Lee Chappie in the house. Make sure you share some love over to Mr. Chappie, uh, our rivals this year uh, for the title. May the fourth be with you. The season ends and that's when Lee United are going to lift that title through the power of Jodair. Uh, Joel Rumour is... Uh, f no, that's not true, is it, Jim Jones? Stop it. Stop it. That's definitely not true. <laughs> uh, I'm good, Ryan. I've been to Adventure Valley today. Um, if you're in the northeast, you'll know what it is. Um, it's uh, my, It was my son's nursery trip. Um, so I had to take my son there and we had a lovely time, man. We had like uh, tubing and uh, castles and trampolines and slides and all that. So, yeah, we we had fun doing that. And then I've just come back, had some food and then I've jumped straight on here. Um, oh, this is a new one. If you lay in the doggy style position while she tries to sleep, it cools you down, apparently. 
Does it really? I don't know. <laughs> don't matter. You, you'll have me trying it, mate. I'll be on all fours like this tonight. <laughs> Face down, ass up. That's the way we like to like that, yeah. Um, right, okay. So <laughs> let's uh, let's get stuck into uh, the articles that have they've come out. We're going to be talking about Tyler Adams as well. This is just from the YEP again. There's a lot in there, but this is the main main part I wanted to focus on. A change of ownership is close, and that could come within days. I'd imagine it's going to be next week. Now it's not going to happen Saturday, Sunday, right? Which would in turn trigger the appointment of a new head coach. Uh, so both things probably are going to happen together. Uh, the feeling is that one will swiftly follow the other, uh, but EFL approval and full ratification of the takeover must come first. So there you have it. That's what we're waiting on, right? So you'd imagine they, they have their manager. Phil Hayes done a bit of a piece as well in The Athletic. Again, just a lot of it's regurgitating the same information, but this is where everyone's at as a content creator, as a person that writes news. The 49ers do run a tight ship. Um, so how much is the wait for the takeover affecting the head coach confirmation? Well, he goes on to say the sale by Rad Rosani to 49ers won't be official until the EFL grants permission for the buyout to proceed. That involves putting all relevant parties, including those like Maraf's 49ers colleague Colin Meador, who will join the board, board at Ellen Road through its owners and directors test. I mean, let's be honest, I don't know who's doing these director's tests, but they get some right shady characters, so they need to fucking pull the finger out, right? Uh, even though the 49ers enterprises had already effectively secured Premier League approval for a buyout, the EFL's test is not exactly the same as the Premier League's. Um, <laughs> EFL's gash, in it? Oh, Lou's replied. Lou's replied. Let's have a look. Uh, let's see what he's got to say. Are you ready, folks? It better be clean. Hi, Joe. I'm Joe's live stream. <laughs> Hope everyone's doing well. Um, <laughs> still no manager. The wait continues. Read the status of Joe's new intro. I may or may not have gone out last night. I may or may not be hanging right now. <laughs> so I apologise and I will try and do better. I will get it to Joe as soon as possible. Love. <laughs> We're not accepting that, are we? He's definitely still in bed, Jay. He's definitely still in bed. Um, that's not acceptable. That means your fee um, will be reduced by 100% for that, mate. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, exactly, Kay. This is the thing with the fit and proper persons test, right? You'd just think you'd go, oh, the Premier League have, have ratified it. Then, then you know, I'll, I'll be be right. Uh, Andrea says uh, the scream has to go. Um, we've already had that conversation. It, it, it's going to go. Uh, sounds rough as out. He does, doesn't he? Right? I wonder where he went. He normally goes Halifax to the Acker, but maybe not. Um, yeah, listen, this guy, man, he's joined BBC. He's going on holidays with big time YouTubers and now, you know, having nights out all the time. He's, he needs to chill out a little bit, mate. Uh, so uh, apparently it involves different questions. It's probably like the questions might be along the lines of something like, um, are you a crook? Yes. Okay. Fit and proper. There we go. Because this is what the EFL is riddled with. Crooks and scammers. Look at Chilino, who had court cases aplenty. Look at, like like people have said, um, Wigan, etc. cetera, Bury, all this. So I, I wonder if their test is literally someone saying, are you, do you have a criminal record? Yes, I do. Okay, you passed the test. Um, so securing approval from the EFL has to be done separately. I don't know why. The paperwork is in and awaiting the thumbs up, right? Um, this, however, is not stopping Fortin Enterprises actively working on things like finding a new head coach or deciding who it wants to be. Obviously, like, can you imagine if it did? <laughs> they weren't allowed to speak to anyone uh, about that. Uh, technically speaking, Leeds are still Rad Rosani's club until the buyout goes through. Maraf will become Leeds chairman as soon as it does. But at this moment, Rad Razani is head of the board with Maraf as vice chairman. So while Rad Razani has comprehensively checked out of Ellen Road and will resign as director imminently, 49ers Enterprises has to be slightly careful in what it announces publicly. I guess that's it, right? Uh, or Lewis says, I just... Oh, you haven't been asleep. Dirty stop out, yeah? Are you at someone else's gaff or is someone at your gaff? What's going on, mate? Talk to me. Um, the hope is that in the next seven days, the EFL will confirm 49er prizes and 49 prizes, 49 enterprises purchase. Leeds had always hoped they would be able to confirm the takeover prior to publicly announcing a head coach. And while there is nothing stopping them settling on the candidate they want, uh, want and getting their ducks in a row with contracts and backroom staff, it is very possible they will hold off on formally breaking cover 
until they are able to announce the takeover. You would imagine they know who it is, right? They would know who their favorite is. Um, I, I, I'm still, my preference is still Farka, but I've got a feeling it's going to be Vieira from what I was told. But obviously, the fact that it's been, I mean, I guess the fact that it's not been announced yet isn't because they're undecided. I mean, I've just been watching the Phil Hayshaw on Square Ball big up the legends. And Michael Normington made a point on there saying, like, if they are still undecided at this stage, that's not really a good thing, is it? And I don't think they are, right? I do not think they are. It's more a case of no one knows. I genuinely feel that's where we're at. It's not a case of they are un undecided. I think it's more a case of no one knows. So everyone in the press is still saying, there's this person, this person, and this person. Because no one wants to to um, stick their flag to the mast, if that's the right saying. I think it is. I nearly set my stall out yesterday when I was told about the Vieira thing. I was going to come on yesterday's video and be like, listen, listen, it's announcing tomorrow. It's going to happen. And then I seen Connor's video, and then someone else told me some other information, and I was like, right, I'm not going. I'm not going. Because sometimes you get stuff, and you don't you don't go dine out on it, and then it comes true, and you think, if only I'd have dined out on it. Um, Katie says, will we get the full list of owners with the takeover? I'm not sure. Who are you hoping for? Would love for some random actors involved. It'd be nice, right? Like, I think the good thing is as well, when you're in the Premier League, you sort of don't need no extra promotion. But in the Championship, we're still going to have plenty of eyes on us because, you know, it was only the other day Sky Sports were doing an interview with uh, Ricky Fowler. Uh, and he was saying, yeah, yeah, me, Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, we're going to invest in Leeds. We've got a couple of sports stars in there. I believe there's a high rack in Washington, D.C. official. Um, so, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if we will get the names. Uh, any news on kits? Um no, but we already know what they are. Right. I've already done them YouTube shots. They're, they're, they're locked in. Trust me when I say they're locked in. Um, We've got the home kit, which is white with the peacock embezzled on it underneath. It's very nice, very clean. Best shirt in a while. Um, We've got uh, the fruit shoot. No, fruit. Uh, What they call fruit salad. Third shirt, because we already know, right? Radwazani, the Burgundy away one was a link back to his roots. This season's third shirt, which was the orange and the bloody black, that was a link to his son. This season's, he's probably got someone else like his wife to design it or something. You know, I mean, the third kit's always a bit of a mad one. And I think haven't we had the away shirt as well? The, no, I don't think we've had the away shirt yet. Uh, yeah, or, or have we? I think we have actually. Isn't it similar to Sweden? I did a vi video on it anyway. Um, but yeah. Um, you dined out on Biel, yeah, and, and I was right though, wasn't I, L? And I didn't say he was coming, I said they'd spoken to him, and I was right because when I fact checked that with a few people, they were like, Oh, no, I don't know that. And then, them same people were reporting it a couple of weeks later, so the information was true. Do you know what I mean? So, there you go. Um, <clears throat> cheers, one, cheers, one. Um, right, okay, uh. Embezzled. Embezzled's the right word? No? Is it not? I'll show you anyway, for those that haven't seen you. I, I think you will have seen it, but um, um, let me have a look. So it's footy headlines. They get it right every year, and every time I've like put them out, everyone goes, oh, you're right, you're talking about, and, and they end up being right. Um, right, we're there. Let's have a look. Uh, ew. This is, a, this is a kit. Yeah, sorry. So the, we've only got the first and the third. We've got the first and the third. Um, so this is the first kit because it was like the Sweden kit. Just bear me one sec. Um, wrong one. Let me share this one. So this is what I was meaning about the peacocks being embezzled on the shirts. Can you see the peacock feathers? Embezzled? Is that the right word? But it's very similar to the Sweden shirt in terms of its uh, colours. For jazzled, yeah. Um, for jazzled, yeah. Embroidered, that's probably it, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's it's nice, it's nice. And then this is the third shirt, right? Uh, I don't know why it's showing me um, uh, style damaging, um, what they called them, straightness. I've got bloody, uh, I've got bloody no hair. Um, right, where's back to there? Um this one okay so there we go uh that's the third shirt 
Um, but then everyone goes, no, it's not. It's a goalkeeper shit, that. Uh, it is what it is. You know what I mean? People people don't want to... Yeah. That, these will be right, yeah. Um, definitely will. Listen, L, I know about bamboozled on teletext. Don't test me, bro. I'm of a certain age. I, I used to love, love bamboozled. Um, and to be honest, the majority of my viewers are of the age bracket between... 40 to 60. Someone actually was talking to me about potentially sponsorships and, and they said it's more for an older audience. And I said, well, you'd be surprised. The majority of my viewers <clears throat> are from an older, older, um, that was it, Katie. Yeah. Katie's bang on that, that kit there. The third kit was linked to the city of culture. Um, and also, uh, rhinos had a similar one. So I think that's what that is. So, um, yeah. Um, and I don't know what the, the second one is we haven't had the away one yet, but like there's even there's even um, there's even pictures of that home shirt. People have acquired it in places like China and Turkey and stuff like that. Man, it's out there. It's done. Uh, Adio Gamer says, "Do a poll on age. I don't need to, mate. I can just check my analytics. Trust me, they're they're they're, they're uh, between forty one and sixty something is my is the majority, and that's like twenty five percent. I've got ninety five percent male, five percent women." Um, which is happens a lot. I was talking to Dan Moylan about that as well, actually. He said it's the same. Um, called it an absolute sausage fest. <laughs> um, anyway, we move. So who's in the running for the job? Again, we all know now at this point, right? Like, it, it, it's... Um, sorry. Why, why is it not sharing? Let me just do that. Um, here we go, look. Uh, who is in the running for the job? So Scott Parker and Daniel Farker both made the interview process. So what we said before, didn't we? First, second interview, Zooms, etc. Partly on the strength of winning promotion from the championship twice before. Patrick Vieira came strongly into the reckoning latterly and Leeds knew he might be keen because they had been made aware of his interest in the job at Ellen Road when Jesse Marsh was sacked. Remember, he was at Crystal Palace at this stage as well. Though Vieira was still at Crystal Palace at the time, his relationship with Palace was close to running its course and uh, the thought of taking charge at Leeds appealed to him. I suppose the, the big thing is with Vieira as well, right? I, I still I still prefer Farker, but 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 I, I think with Vieira, it's clear at times he's wanted the Leeds job. He likes the idea of being manager of Leeds United. Obviously, he was um, around in the 90s when Leeds United were a bit of a force, you know, um, and he was at the top of his game in the Premier League. He'll probably know the the gravitas of this football club, you know what I mean? So maybe that's why he's very keen on it. He likes the project. He probably feels that he can work with the ownership, etc. obviously working in America previously and that. Um, so it, it's clear he really wants the, the, the job. And it's said... Uh, to have presented very strongly this week. Now, if you remember, we got many reports saying he went to the top of the tree. That sort of coincides with what they've been saying there. Um, but Leeds were pleased with the interviews as a whole. Prior to those interviews, yeah, the Carlos Corbran thing, it's not happening, is it? I think a lot of us would like that, but um, I think, it, uh, yeah. Um, the fact that they haven't spoken to West Brom about speaking to the speaking to him yet it's it's thing and then the last bits on is the delay of again it's just an opinion piece uh, that part it's more a case of like do you think it's a problem that we haven't got a manager in as of yet I think a lot of us would just say yet yeah, but like Phil here reported the other day you've also got um you know uh Vinny Company Bielsa they didn't come in till late and they were all right right um Matthew says, as an Albion fan, I'm glad Carlos is staying here. I couldn't take the stick from my family as they are all Leeds fans. There you go. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what's happening on the manager front. I was hoping we'd get something today. I was out, as I say, with my son. And then um, I, when I came back to the car, I checked my phone and there was no updates from a manager. And I was thinking, right, well, it's one o'clock, 12 o'clock now. Like, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four. Who's that Elvis, isn't it? Um, we're gonna rock around the clock tonight. No, it's not Elvis, is it? Who sings that? Darren Moore, it's not Darren Moore, mate. <laughs> I know you didn't mean that. Who sings that? We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We got Mark Farrell, happy birthday, mate, and many happy returns. Being 60, you'll know who sung that song, right? Tell me. Stop it, Juan. Stop that. <laughs> Bill Haley. Say, I don't even know who that is. 
genuinely don't know how long that is. Right, uh, Bill Haley in the comments. There you go. Commodore. Commodores? There's a band called the Commodore, right? Commodore 64? Is that, that's a computer, though, right? Um, um, Yorkshireman says, so it won't be done until the takeover is done. I hope not. I'm hoping it's Monday, mate. I'm hoping it's Monday. Right, let's talk about some transfer news, all right? Um, <clears throat> let's get straight into it. So, this has come out today uh, about Tyler Adams. Uh, Tyler Adams is a wanted man, okay? Aston Villa are interested in Tyler Adams amid uh, a transfer from Leeds United. Um, this is done by three people. Um, so, I assume some of these will be... Um, will be Villa writers or Birmingham-based writers, if you like. So Aston Villa are interested in signing Tyler Adams. Uh, he's been tracked for some time and he's high on Villa's list of targets this summer as an I Emery continues his squad rebuild. Listen, I'll say it like straight now. If Villa put in a bid, Tyler Adams will leave. We can't expect him to stay. Aston Villa are a club Unfortunately for us, that are going places. Uh, Aston Villa have have ridden the storm of their early time in the Premier League, where they nearly got relegated, etc. You could argue maybe they spunked quite a lot of the Grealish money up the wall, but then an I Emery's came in, a proper appointment with a proven track record, and has got them to Europe within the same fecking season. Do you know what I mean? So as much as the 49ers, and as much as Tyler Adams likes Leeds United, because I know he does, you can't turn down uh, Aston Villa and the law of working with an I Emery, who's won multiple. Look, if I'm a bet, like if you fancy an outside bet, put Villa down for the Europa League next season. Put them down for it because that guy knows how to win that trophy. And they will have a good squad next season. There'll be more in the mold of an I Emery. Your centre back will come back who was injured this season. Is it Diego Carlos? They're then going to look to buy Tyler Adams. They'd probably go out and get another striker to help because I think Danny Ings is leaving. So that, but, but also just on Ollie Watkins, he's turned him into a proper player. He's turned him into a proper player. Um, no, I think Brighton's conference league, bro. I think Brighton's conference league. I think Villa got Europa league, right? Am I right? People? Yeah, I think I think Brighton's Conference League, maybe Villa Europa League, or or maybe that's the other way around. And I apologise if it is. Um, so yeah, look, uh, Reese Necker says yes, Joe. I'm assuming you're a Villa fan, bro. But yeah, listen, and I, I, they're going places. They are a good club. They've got a huge fan base, and the the facts are, if they put a bid on the table or Villa Conference League, right? Okay, well there you go. That's an even easier trophy to win. So put them down, put them down for it. Put your money, put your money on them. I'd expect Brighton to go far in the Europa League as well, just because they've got Deserbi and his balls elite. So there you go. Um, yeah, that's true as well, mate. There's been a lot of port reports about Malumbai, and maybe he'd be someone that we would look to come in and, and replace uh, Tyler Adams with. Uh, let's get back to the rest of the article, though, because he's not ju they they're not just the only club. Uh, Adams was one of Leeds' top performers. We know about that. Um, Leeds would like Adams to stay and have planned discussions to that effect, but are conscious they may prove difficult following the relegation to the championship. Villa aren't the only could, club interested as a number of Premier League rivals are also set to be keen. And with that in mind, I just want to shoot up this article because it's been reported that Brighton are also looking at him. Obviously, they're going to be losing Moses Caicedo this summer. They've just lost uh, Alexis McAllister. They're going to have to uh, invest a lot in the squad. Defensively, really good. But, you know, as much as I actually like Danny Welbeck, I think he's a better Patrick Bamford. I, I know he doesn't score loads of goals, but I, I really rate him as a footballer and as a striker and bringing others into play. Do you need to replace him if you're fighting in the Europa League? Evan Ferguson's a top talent. We know about Matoma, etc. But they'll need to bolster out that squad. So it's not only Villa. You've also got Brighton interested as well. Um and 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 look, it's a gettable fee because we've been relegated. We only paid seventeen million for him. If Leeds United get anywhere close to twenty-five to thirty million for Tyler Adams, I think they'll sell him, or they may have to. Hopefully, we get we get some sort of bidding war. That would be perfect, right? Some sort of bidding war. You want your best players because ultimately, maybe when I say twenty-five to thirty million, people will go, "What? That's so low." And I just wish we we were a bit like Leicester, who were holding out for bloody fifty fifty-five million for Madison, who's a championship player in the last year of his contract. Do you know what I mean? It's it, it's mad. It's really mad. Um, 
sorry. Um, yeah, like what I will say on this, the Irish Leeds fan as well. Um, do you know gamble responsibly, bro? Like I myself have banned myself from. I'm on. I'm on Gamstop. I'm on Gamstop because I, I was spending far too much money because it was too easy on the apps. If I want to bet now, I have to go to the betting shop. And, and when I'm in the betting shop, I'm a lot more responsible with it. I won't put 20 quid at a time on a bet because I'm like, no, that's 20 pound. I'm tight. But when it's online, it's so easy to just click a button. So I do come away from that now. Um, so, yeah, just, you know that anyway. Um, why are you making strange noises? It's not. It's not me. It's the dog, bro. Uh, it's the dog. He's just out there. Um, what's up with Gabe? I don't. I, no one said anything about Gabe. Not me, anyway. Gabe's on here. Um, he's a top guy. Um, I don't know what where you're getting that in the chat or anything like that. But all love to Gabe. Um, all love. Um, love it. Um, all love to everyone that I get on this channel, man. I try to bring as many content creators together as I can, man. It's not a one, you know, a, a shut up shop kind of vibe. It's really, really good. Um, Right. Okay. So let's um, let's go. Let's go here. Um, so Villa aren't the only club interested. I've just mentioned Brighton there as well. Uh, and even though they've got Yuri Tillemans, they still believe it needs further strengthening. And obviously, they've picked up Yuri Tillemans for for nothing, right? So that's what I mean. So they still have money uh, sloshing around. Uh, John McGinn's just signed a new deal. Bubakar Kamara, Douglas Luig and Jacob Ramsey all had good seasons. They've got Sans on there. That hasn't worked for him in his time at Villa. Maybe he could move on. Um, oh, there, there you go. It goes on to say Morgan Sanson and Marvellous Nakamba. Uh, they were sent on loan last season and they're listening to offers for Leander Dendonka. Dendonka was a signing that Gerard made, right? He, he made some poor decisions, Stephen Gerard at Villa like dropping Mings and, and then signing Den Donker. Listen, someone like Den Donker in the championship that would work a treat for Leeds United, throw him in and give us some cash for Adams maybe, and we'll look at it like that potentially. But yeah, look, Aston Villa, Brighton, and probably many more clubs will look at Tyler Adams. And as much as we'd like him to stay, it looks like he could be on the move. One player who I did believe was on the move um Looks like maybe he's open to staying, uh, and that is uh, Crisencio Somerville because he was asked on international duty about his time. And you know, we've seen Rodrigo's response, we've seen Melier's response, the how to and how to not respond to transfer questions. And um, you know, to be fair to 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 Crisencio, he said, I see and read some things here and there, but I focus on this tournament. I also deliberately asked my agent not to give me that information until after the European Championship. So he's basically keeping his head in the game. We can take a prize. We'll see the rest later. Um, and he, he goes on about Leeds. He says, I used to play FIFA with the guys I played against in England. I enjoyed every game. And I really love Leeds, where I came in as an 18-year-old. Okay, He says, that moment when he scored against Liverpool will stay with me forever. A few hours after that goal, I turned 21. That was the best birthday I could wish for. I hope we return to the Premier League as soon as possible. That's good, right? Like that that's good hearing him say that. Because I thought Cree might be one of them that that maybe pushes himself out of the door and, and maybe not causes a few issues, but it, it just says don't read a book by his cover because he's quite smart in saying, Listen, I've told my agent I don't want to know, which is good, because he's probably has been contacted. Would he be open to coming back to Holland, for example? But he's also finished it with, I hope we return to the Premier League as soon as possible. That's the key selling point with whoever comes in charge. Give us one more year. Give us one more year. And 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 if you don't go up, then you can go with our blessing. But someone like Chris Somerville in the championship will dust it up. Look at Jack Clark. Chris Somerville is better than Jack Clark. So we need to get the we need to get the manager in to convince these players. And I think Patrick Vieira, as much as I prefer Farker, has the power and, and more pull to do that. I, I I think there's a case to be made about about Adams, but I just feel like the clamor for someone like Villa is going to be too much. It's going to be too much because Villa are a huge club. Villa are in Europe. They have a a, a serial winner. Um. So yeah, um, I think it's uh, I think it's good to hear 
that coming out of Cree Somerville's mouth. Uh, one deal that's probably going to be done on the 1st of July, I'd imagine it's Mark Roker. It looks like that one's been um, done behind the scenes, if you like, uh, and have agreed a deal in principle for the zero-cost exit of Mark Roker. Um, he'll go on loan until June, um, and then I believe he will go for a nominal fee at the end of it. Uh, negotiation from the clubs is already closed, only in the absence of minor details for the drafting of contracts. So, yeah, I think he's going to come, and then obviously it's going to be with a view to a permanent deal. It just hasn't worked out for Mark Roker. And I think on the 1st of uh, July, we'll probably see that move be one of the first to 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 leave the football club, if you like, Mark Rocker, as well as probably as well uh, Diego Lorente, because... Um, Again, that's been reported that that, that one uh, is is getting close to getting done as well. The, they're at the renegotiating table with this one. I think Leeds United are saying, listen, we don't want a loan again with a view to a permanent. Just take him off our hands. So I think he goes. Um, one player that I thought would have had a lot more suitors because he was still um, well thought of, you thought, from a, a lot of European scouts, was Ilya Melier. Now, there has been a report, this is from The Athletic, um, which uh, the lads at LUFC Fan Zone have done, and, and big shout out to those. Um, I'm just going to put this up. Um, Leeds United expect Ilian Melier to leave this summer. Um, as of yet, no bids or offers have been tabled for Melier. Okay, so that's quite surprising that, that none haven't come. And also, he's away on international duty, just like Somerville is with the under-21s, but Melier's been benched. Melier's not even been used in the under-21s, so he's not even getting an opportunity to showcase his skills, um, you know, in the under-21s internationals. So, I mean, what's going to happen with Melier? Uh, I don't... I don't know, maybe he stays put. I don't know, but he's made it clear he wants to leave. He's obviously got big aspirations because he's talking out like, oh, I want to be Chelsea's number one, in an effect, you know. Oh, yeah, I know Chelsea have been linked in the past, but, um, you know, I'd want to be their number one, but that's not going to happen, is it? That is definitely not going to uh, going to happen. Um, here is the, the piece in full uh, from... Um, from um, Phil here at the Athletic. I'm just trying to get to the point. But yeah, they, there's no there's no no offers for him. Um, so yeah, like like Lead Sayers says, it's it's been quite the fall from grace. And I do, yeah, I agree with you, Yorkshireman. Maybe even towards the back end of the window, someone someone takes him. Um, we'll have to wait and see though. But as it stands, it looks like uh, he's he's going to be staying put for the time being. Uh, let me just shoot back over onto the old Twitter sphere um, because I'm getting a lot of notifications, which is sometimes means something's happening. Let me have a look. Um, what's this? Uh, okay, I'm just going to retweet that local Leeds band. So I've done that. Um, just one second. Let me see these notifications. I think it's Andrea Russo, everyone's favourite Italian, just having a conversation with people. Yes, it is. Have we had a tweet from Phil here just there? It's just what we had earlier and um, what the article we went through. Um, yeah, no, nothing there. Uh, Rodrigo chat. We know that he is going, uh, look, he's on 100 grand a week. There's clubs in Spain that want him. We know that Victor Orta's club, uh, Sevilla, uh, are going to take him. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame we are part owned by Saudis like Chelsea and therefore we could just like get rid of all our, our, um, our players that way. And then there is this link as well. We've seen a lot of links to goalkeepers over the last 24 to 48 hours. Um, but Cal Dallo could be their own Nick Pope. Um, so according to Football League World, we are after a keeper. Victor Johansson, the Rotherham goalkeeper. Cal Darlow has been mentioned. There's been other keepers. I, I think the thing is with me with Cal Darlow, I think a lot of it is because they know we need a keeper and we've been linked to him in the past. I'm not too sure if that's, um, you know, a credible source. Uh, I don't know how Cal Darlow is getting on now. I mean, it's, he, you know, he was pretty well thought of one once upon a time, but he, he won't have played much, right? Um, <clears throat> we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Um, listen, looks like it's going to be a quiet weekend. We're not going to get a manager in the door. Probably Monday now. Um, 
I'll I'll keep you updated with any news that drops. I'd, I am working today up till eleven o'clock. If there's nothing comes out, I might just have an early night because I'm taking the kids out tomorrow. But um, yeah, if something does happen, I'll 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 chat to you. Um, yeah, Carl, it's awful. No news. I know. I know. Right. I mean, there is Tyler Adams, Melier piece. Obviously, we know. Look, no one knows. No one knows. But it looks like it's either Vieira or Farca. I still think it's probably Vieira at this stage. And the only reason it's not being announced is because we're waiting for the EFL ratification. They might do a big piece, right? It might be like the 49ers. We're now in charge, and here's your manager. Then on the 1st of July, which is next Saturday. Is that right? 1st of July, next Saturday. Let me double check. I only know, I know because money in the banks next week and yeah next Saturday first of July. Someone's actually messaged me about um, potentially having a ticket available for SmackDown and Money in the Bank. Oh my god, it would be absolutely amazing. But if not, I'll be doing a watch along of it. We're going to start some WWE watch alongs <laughs> on this day. On this day, I see clearly. Big up to you. Listen, smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments. In. <laughs> Everybody say L A night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that guy, man. I think he might win it, you know. I hope they don't give it Logan Paul. I hope they don't give it Logan Paul. I hope it's LA night. Everybody go L A night. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. And I want to see Jimmy and Jay. But I've got a feeling someone else is going to screw Jimmy and Jay. I'm not sure who it will be. But I think, yeah, Roman and Solo win it and someone else will get involved. I think, I think, maybe. I don't know. It's going to be an unreal match, that, by the way. I just want to be there for the intro, man. <laughs> Be class. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you all later on tonight if there's, if there's news. If not, it'll be tomorrow. Peace out, and have a great Friday. Yeah, it is scripted. I know it is, Michael. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> Obviously.